Hello and welcome to the BCU Alumni Podcast. I'm Bethan and in each episode we welcome a different member of the BCU Alumni community back onto campus to tell us all about what they've been up to since they graduated. Today we're joined by Marion Wahid, a photography alumna who uses her photography to convey her identity as a British Pakistani Muslim woman. Through her deep-rooted family history and the mass integration of South Asian migrants within the UK, her photographs explore womanhood, memory, migration and the notion of home and belonging. Since graduating in 2018, she has won many prestigious awards, including the Portrait of Britain 2021 by the British Journal of Photography. In 2020, she featured on BBC's Great British Photography Challenge and her work has been commissioned by the likes of The Guardian, The Financial Times and The Telegraph. She was also invited to be on the selection panel for a prestigious competition held by the National Portrait Gallery, which was spearheaded by the Princess of Wales for the project Hold Still, which was a unique collective portrait of the UK during lockdown. Alongside this, she has judged art competitions for Photo Works and the New Art Gallery Walsall. She was the lead artist for the Creative Connections Project by the National Portrait Gallery, which is currently on display at the gallery in London. Her work has also been exhibited in Granary Square at King's Cross in London, and last year she had a major solo exhibition at the Midlands Art Centre, which has toured to Impressions Gallery in Bradford, which included photographs, moving images and writing. In this episode, we are going to be exploring more about Mariam's career so far, how she has used the power of networking and social media, and how important her work is for underrepresented communities. Mariam, thanks so much for joining us today. So for those listening, Mariam has actually been um, our light photographer over the last few weeks on photo shoots, taking place with some of our chosen graduates in this year's alumni festival. So what has it been like to be back onto campus? Do you almost feel like you've done a bit of like a full circle? Yeah, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Beth. <laughs> and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be back here working with the um, alumni and alumnas and also just seeing the the great campus and facilities of BCU. I feel like um, I'm getting to know more about the university and I'm falling in love with it again. Yeah. The same reason why I actually came here was for the facilities and I'm getting to see you know the, the, the broader things that BCU do, which is great. Okay, so it's been around five years since you graduated from BCU then, <laughs> but you've done a huge amount in that time. Mm-hmm. So what were those kind of first initial steps after graduating like for you? So the initial steps after graduating were, I actually didn't know which direction I was going. Um, But when I was, during my final year, um, we had the Inspire Festival where, you know, we got to exhibit our work in the, in the, in the actual university. And we got to invite, you know, people to see the exhibition. Um, And then also, from that exhibition, you could in you could kind of um, take part in in you know you could pr- kind of nominate yourself for a certain award. Yeah. So I had nominated myself forward for a um, mentorship award um, with Grain Projects. Mm-hmm. So uh, quite luckily, I was awarded that. And uh, what that award entailed was that you would get um, you know six to nine months mentorship with um, with Grain. And my mentor was Nicola Shipley, who's the director at Grain Photography. Mm-hmm. And I think that really, really kind of facilitated and encouraged me to um, create a career in the art side of photography. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I started university, my end goal, uh, what I what kind of photographer I would be was, was one thing. And then when I actually graduated, I didn't actually realize that this is what I actually want to do and this is yeah. how I'm gonna implement it. And actually I didn't realize, I, I didn't feel like I would get the opportunities that I, Mm -hmm. you know, before starting as a student, I didn't think I'd get those opportunities. So how do you think you've been able to establish yourself almost like very early in your career then? I mean, lots of people already know who you are, they know your photography. How do you think you've been able to do it? When I, as in with everybody, I'm sure like whenever you do what you do and you love what you do, Mm -hmm. you don't really think about getting popular in your field or you don't really, you just want to basically get by and make it work for you and that's the way I thought anyway like I just wanted to be able to create photographs that I love and also really enjoy my career Mm -hmm. and um, I think that's been easier because um, I have actually had the right opportunities come up so in terms of like uh, when I graduated for example I wanted to create more work and I was like what can I do what you know and I, I was 
constantly literally living and breathing photography. And I was so dedicated and I, I went completely freelance. Uh, after my second year of university, I went completely freelance. So I actually quit my call center job. Wow. And I was like, I want to focus on photography. And I think that's the stuff I don't really talk much about because people see the achievements. But I think if you're dedicated, you have to constantly be connected and involved. And, you know, networking is one part of that. But then yeah. also constantly, constantly looking out for the opportunities. And you have to put your private life on pause for a bit and you have to kind of focus on what is it that, you know, where are the opportunities? How do I get there? Um, so, you know, I was constantly looking on newsletters online, looking, following galleries, going to exhibition openings, mm -hmm. connecting with other photographers, reading, um, which is the kind of fun stuff still, because you when you love something, you will literally spend time on it yeah um, so you know i i loved reading and i love looking into other photographers looking at the other works of art um across the globe basically and that really kind of helped me kind of ripple onto other opportunities i would kind of find my way around things i really love doing so for example like in 2019 which was the year after i graduated there was an opportunity that came up called transforming narratives mm -hmm. um here in birmingham and uh, it was a project that um, Culture Central was was running, basically. And it was um, funded by the British Council and Arts Council England. So they were, the project itself was connecting um, Birmingham, Pakistan and Bangladesh. And basically like an art exchange between three places. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with my fascination and interest with, you know, photography around race, identity, um, I thought this is a great opportunity and I really pushed myself forward and, and just applied for it. And I thought, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. I'll, I'll just get a no or a decline. And I think prior to this, I had been declined because I was a needy graduate. And, you know, I think maybe things on my CV just didn't match up to it. And mm. this opportunity though came to me, I felt like at the right time. And I think if an opportunity doesn't come to me, it simply isn't that time for me. And, you know, I just wait and I keep trying other things and trying to find my way around. And I'm lucky because I feel like things that have worked out for me have been the right things for me mm -hmm. and they've developed my career in you know wonderful ways um so yeah so I, when I applied for that I I um I, I was successful and I uh, did a research and development project so it was actually not photography it was just carrying out research but right. I took the opportunity to take my camera along and then take portraits in Pakistan and I photographed women because that was my studies like back, yeah like my, fo my focal point so I really wanted to look at the female identity in Pakistan um, and yeah, I had so much fun. I interviewed women uh, of all ages, all backgrounds. I didn't actually realize being a British Pakistani, I'd never been to Pakistan before. Right. So seeing how diverse Pakistan was, because yeah. obviously in the in Birmingham especially, we are very close knit, like the community, you know, you, you, you know what community lives here and what mm -hmm. part they're from. But actually going to Pakistan and seeing all, you know, aspects and, and parts of Pakistan. I mean, I didn't travel very much there. I went to Karachi and Lahore mainly and just a town near Karachi, like a small village. But just exploring those areas and then meeting women. Uh, I was 23 years old at the time. As also, I think that's a young girl. Like in my in my head, I was like yeah. a very young girl. So I was really moved by the stories that I was uh, I was discovering. And uh, you can see in the portraits as well, like, you know, the, there's that little bit of, um, I've treated them with a bit of delicate, like mm. I've, I've treated them very delicately because I feel like, we connected more than just, you know, hi, what's your name? What are you doing? And what do you, mm. what are your struggles as a woman? It was like me actually talking to them about their lives and really trying to understand, but then also taking it in as a young woman myself was, it was a moving experience and I definitely will never forget that experience in my life. And what I've learned from that phase, I won't, I won't forget that basically. So you aim to represent the underrepresented in your photography. So where does the need for this kind of stem from? And also, how do you go about doing it? So my motivation to photographing the underrepresented is because when I was growing up as a young girl in Birmingham and going to galleries and museums and just strolling down the streets and seeing the city, yeah. um, I felt like women who were from the South Asian background in the UK or women who wore the hijab, women who... Um, even women in general that just looked like me, basically, mm -hmm. they just weren't represented. Um, and not necessarily even in the arts, but even in the mass media. So this is where I, I felt like there was, you know, I was motivated to 
create my own projects. Mm -hmm. And when I was quite little, I loved history. I loved learning about the Tudors and Victorians. It's like, yeah. It sounds really cringe, but I like really loved like no, I get learning that. about yeah. the his like my history lessons. Everybody in my class used to find it so boring in my school, but I would be so excited. Yeah. And I think especially because my history teacher was an exciting like teacher. So yeah. I um, would just be fascinated that there was all these people before us and this was their identities and mm. this is how they dressed. And I think it just felt very, um, just very magical to go back in time. And whenever I would hear about, you know, the history of the UK, I just never really knew like the history of British Pakistanis. Mm -hmm. So my family album, I'm, I'm the youngest in my family and my parents got married in 1982. Right. And they had me in 1995. So when I would look at my family album, I saw like almost two generations before me because I was literally like yeah. quite little when I, I was born quite late in the family. So mm -hmm. I like to, well, I like to see, when I see my family album, I kind of see a little bit of the history of them actually coming and settling here because mm -hmm. they were first generational Pakistanis. Um, and then I would see photographs of Pakistan. So because there was two different places and times in the family album. There was like these little jigsaws that were missing in right. my in my world of like history, in my own like personal history. So I think this is where I started to really investigate like, you know, my family heritage, but also like their journeys to the UK. And obviously I would watch documentaries and find photographs even in uh, the Library of Birmingham there are many um, collections like the Daesh collection that holds mm -hmm. portraits and photographs of uh, the um, South Asian diaspora and just you know South Asians in the UK but there's never that backstory of who this person was and sometimes mm. there's no no names either and like you know who this person is and so I just thought well let me just start with my own self because this is where my fascination starts from, like who and where I came from. And mm -hmm. I never had this identity crisis. Like I always, uh, I always felt like growing up in the UK and literally never visiting Pakistan, I always felt like Britain was my home. And you know, yeah. I am, I'm British and my parents, they're from Pakistan, but like they've lived here like all their lives because my mm -hmm. mom came when she was 18, my dad came here when he was six. So like there was always this kind of like connection with Britain and there was also this like cultural connection with being from the Pakistani like mm -hmm. community. Um, so I never had this kind of complexity and, and people never made me feel like, you know, you, you're not British, you're not this and you're that. Mm. I just, I think that, you know, the, the, the generation, the kind of time that I was, I was raised and like growing up in, people were, you know, integrated and also people were, um, yeah, people were a lot more connected and there was a yeah. bit more cultural understanding. Um, so, yeah, just going back to, you know, what fascinates me in, in terms of representing the underrepresented, I feel like a lot of that has come from my own experience of growing yeah. up in the UK and just feeling like there needs to be a little bit of story, like there needs to be some stories about us in photography and mm -hmm. in arts, you know, and we should be then represented in the collections, in museums. We should be, our stories should be archived because if we're not archiving this, when we're literally removing like a whole community and a whole mass of people that lived in Birmingham at this moment in time. Yeah. I felt like there was a huge need to be represented and also to encourage other people to represent because um, one of the things I found as a student was um, trying to have conversations about identity and race was quite awkward because yeah. Nobody in my class was doing it. And it was quite nerve wracking. It was quite, um, I think, especially when you grow up as um, a British Muslim, there's always this tension that people are already gonna judge you or know, mm. they're already gonna have a perception of you. But, you know, me growing up, I went to an Islamic faith primary school, like, and also my parents are not super religious, but like, you know, I'm, I'm aware of my faith and mm -hmm. I'm aware of my community. And I feel like, there's so many amazing things that we can talk about and there's so many things that have just been labeled on us and yeah. even labeled on us as South Asian women uh, or as Muslim women that were very sheltered or were very like this. And I just think like um, photography has been one of the wonderful ways that I have come out and I met people that have probably never even spoken to a Muslim woman or never yeah. even seen a woman in a hijab in places. And 
even from the from the South Asian diaspora, like understanding as well that we are very diverse as South Asians is not just one type of South Asian. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been many British Pakistanis that have seen uh, my exhibitions like Zebu Nissa mm-hmm. in, in Bradford and in Birmingham when I had it at the MAC. Um, they've come up to me and said, you know, we actually feel like there's a representation of us because yeah. whenever we've seen photography about South Asia, there's only one type of you know, place that's shown in South Asia. Mm-hmm. And so they feel like, you know, and even other people from outside of South Asia, they felt like, you know, we have had very similar experiences of mm. memory and also very similar experiences of ha- having other, you know, cultural um, connections. And I think one of the biggest aims of my work is not to create that difference, but to create cultural understanding mm-hmm. in Britain. Because like I said, I'm also proud to be British. And I think the one of the great things about Britain is how diverse we are yeah. and how we have, you know, different women. We've got an Indian prime minister right now. So it's all these things that, you know, these jigsaws that make us who we are, mm-hmm. which I think are great and they should be shine light and they shouldn't just be one story being told about Britain. Um, and yeah, I think that definitely gives a lot of pride and confidence to other British Pakistanis. And it gives you that peace in your heart that you belong somewhere. You know, going to Pakistan and discovering Pakistan, I definitely didn't feel like I was Pakistani, but, you know, it made me feel peaceful that I know yeah. where my grandparents are resting. I know the life that they lived. I, I've seen a bit of my background, a bit of my life. And I I love that I have this mm. heritage and I have this connection, but I also love, you know, that I've grown up in the UK and I've, you know, I've got this kind of uh, British cultural experience yeah. as well. And so how do you find work then? Like do people like approach you for commissions and how often are you able to just, you know, be able to focus more on your personal projects? So this is a wonderful question because a lot of people ask me this. Um, because I'm self-employed and freelancing, I have to go and do the hard work and yeah. to people and all these accolades that I get, I have to use them and carry them on my shoulders and say, look, you know, this is why yeah. you need to get me for this. Um, I definitely feel like I could work a lot harder and I definitely feel like I need a manager at times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, in terms of like getting the opportunities, uh, definitely like I have to constantly look and uh, obviously it can be quite draining. Mm-hmm. Um, mentally, you do need to stop and break and I, I have to take those breaks. And yeah. I think sometimes when you are so active in the photography scene or you you have a presence there if you snooze you just kind of feel the pressure like you have to go back into it but actually yeah. for me like I've learned that actually it's okay to take a back seat for a second it's okay to just breathe for a minute and reset um and yeah definitely I feel like you do need to like with networking especially like mm. if, we're, if we're talking about networking you have to give that time to yourself you can't always expect and I think it's really frustrating as well because sometimes other people in the networking groups or something they might feel like you always have to be posting you always have to be doing something and there's that natural pressure now anyway but I think yeah I try and keep a balance between that work because as I said I've I've fully freelance so sometimes the work can be constant 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 Mm. and sometimes I have to just physically like stop at some point and take a bit break and then go back into it and that's the best way I've functioned Um, But in terms of like looking for the opportunities, signing up to uh, certain newsletters in Mm -hmm. the city, like Culture Central are great um, in Birmingham. Um, Even just visiting certain galleries that you like, like signing up to the Midlands Art Centre's uh, newsletter, because then people can, they can post uh, regular updates like this is happening, that's happening. Um, So yeah, that's been quite useful. Um, And yeah, just trying to stay kind of active in terms of looking for the opportunities that's the way I've done it mostly okay so what have been some of your I guess like favorite moments of your career so far then have you got any like major highlights my career highlight so far has got to be traveling to uh, Pakistan with uh, the British Council and Arts Council and then being funded for the Zeb Nissa project by the mm-hmm. Midlands Arts Centre because not only have I you know been able to go on a personal journey from it but I've been able to capture that through something that I love and something that I feel is so powerful photography Mm -hmm. and bring it back to the UK and then to see the response and support that I've got here from you know even just community members I mean I'm I'm not even talking about you know people who are you know commissioners and all those people but I'm talking about the actual community has made me feel so complete and you know one of the 
kind of aims of as me being a photographer with my personal work because I also my commissions are different to my personal work mm-hmm. um, is that you know I, I want to be able to uh, create that cultural change but also sorry create that cultural understanding but also um, really build bridges between communities and really you know make people feel like they can actually be impacted through a photograph yeah um so yeah in terms of that like that was one of my you know kind of highlights yeah so what is next then what are you kind of currently working on and i guess also what does the future hold for you Mm, okay well i think for me the goal is to just keep on creating photographs i don't want to stop that so i'm currently working on a photography commission with uh the nhs where i wear photograph where i'm photographing um people from underrepresented backgrounds um and that is again one of the things that i want to keep doing um i want to keep representing and i keep i want to keep photographing people but in different Mm. interesting ways um so yeah i want to be more creative and more um experimental with uh future projects that i do that's one of the things i i want to do anyway and i also uh, just want to keep on traveling with my camera as well mm. because I think going to Pakistan made me realize that there's so many interesting stories and people within you know my my kind of motherland mm-hmm. you could say and I want to just keep continuing that in some way um, yeah but we'll see what the future holds <laughs> you've been selected as one of our industry icons at this year's alumni festival what does that mean to you it's honestly an honor and us actually because i'm actually getting to know each and every one of those people uh as well that are sharing this uh honor with me um it's i just feel even more happier and delighted really because there's some really remarkable people in Mm. this uh in sharing this opportunity um but also just to be able to be recognized like this by bcu is very 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 like it's very wonderful honestly thank you and final question then if you could go back to your very first day here at bcu which was 2015 um mm-hmm. what is the one piece of advice that you would now give yourself oh nice question i would probably say to myself to one take it easy everything will be okay yeah because i think when you're at university there's all this pressure and maybe because I actually like I'm in a family of people who've just studied academic mm-hmm. kind of like subjects like uh, not really practical like arty subjects yeah. so for me like going into photography and like being the only kind of arty kind of person in my family yeah. that has pursued photography um, at university I would probably say just have faith and, and believe in what you're going to do and uh, just enjoy the experience of it. I actually came through clearing, you know, people don't know this, but yeah. I actually had applied to do com- have a completely different career at, uh, so I, I, when I was at college, I studied photography and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but I also was studying religious studies and philosophy and I loved religious studies and philosophy equally. Mm-hmm. And when I was applying for university, I applied at UOB for theology and I think it was theology and like, I don't know, it's a good joint kind of degree. And I applied yeah. for that and I was read, getting ready of a summer. And I think two weeks before or three weeks, two weeks before results day. Yeah. I just had an enlightening moment. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I woke up and I was like, you know, I've always wanted like photography in the background of my life. As yeah. in, I've always wanted to have my business in photography and do this, 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 but I'm not going to be studying it. I'm going to be studying mm. theology and religion. And I like this as well, but... Is that really what I want to do? Yeah. And uh, I didn't even wait for results. I just said to my mom and dad, I was like, I've, I want to change my direction. I want to go do photography. And I, would, I won't lie to you, you know, when telling my family members that, some of them were a bit reluctant. They weren't mm. really, they didn't really get it. And my mom was the only one that was like, do what you love, do what you want to do. I think because yeah. I'm the youngest as well, I got away with it. <laughs> they were just like, do whatever the hell you want to do. Um, so yeah, I, obviously I, I put in my head that, whatever subject I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a hundred percent. And this is what I felt about photography. I felt like it was the love of my life at the time. So I was yeah. like, I'm not going to change my career path. I think I'm going to go and jump on photography and I'm going to 
do it as like a hundred percent thing. I'm not gonna do it as a side hustle. I'm gonna make mm. like a complete thing out of it. And like, just I'm so blessed that I, I've actually gone down this route. And yeah, I mean, if I had studied theology and religion, I would have been a teacher or done that kind of route, gone yeah. through that route. And with photography, I've I'm still I've still got my business, but I still have a wonderful art practice in photography mm. where I'm really focusing on deep things that mean a lot to me and religion does seed into it, culture does seed into it, which has been really, really nice. So um yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't change I wouldn't go back and change that. Yeah. Now that I know where I am. But at the time it was scary. And I think when you when I started uni and I looked at all these people around me talking about camera functions and yeah. you know, like uh, how to set up a studio light and all this. And, you know, I've got this camera and it's like the latest Nik- Nikon, you know, like yeah. <laughs> you still find those like, you know, the the technical photography yeah. fellas. But um, for me, it's more about telling the stories through the photographs and, mm-hmm. you know, really just... Um, yeah, just doing what you love. And I, I've been very blessed that I've continued that and I've just given it my all in that sense. Mariam, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast Thank today. You. It's been so nice to talk to you and find out more about your journey. And hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bethan.